there's anything I've learned over these past brooding years, it's been my contentment with the lonesome silence. It used to terrify me, I won't lie. There's no use in doing that here. Being on my own has always felt daunting. I was afraid of facing the unforgiving moon. I was afraid of losing myself. I was afraid of confronting the cold hands of death. How could I stand alone against the vast sea of this grueling desert after what I'd done? I then had the realization that being a fear-ridden, lost soul isn't as bad as the ghost tales make it out to be. I became the one that everyone was afraid of, the one who silences saloons with one dusty footstep dirt curling around my boots like mist. Silence is power, I've gathered, as nothing makes me feel stronger than the quiet, quivering eyes that follow my every move. They beg and burn and plead, crying to the iron on my waist. I've never actually used it, but the silence exudes confidence for miles. Sometimes I hate who I've become, but I was given no choice. Mercy shot me in cold blood all those years ago when I lost everything. So who am I to show kindness or compassion? Who am I to be the good guy? No one out here among the dried out wood and bleeding sky is good. The Wild West never will promise that. He is made of many things, that's for damn sure, but he is not built on false perfection. It's dirty, full of deceit and death. Though there's a satisfaction to it all, the other part of me loves passing through unknown towns and riding into the dying sun. I howl at the moon and catch the stars in my hat, because sometimes those wishes are all I have to go on. far too long since you've held me in your arms and stroked my lips. My greatest fear is that the sun has worn me down, wrinkled my face, and you won't recognize me anymore. What if you look into my eyes and see foreign determination and anger? What if it makes you run away again? But see, this dragging time has mangled me mad. All I've done is revel in my guilt and regret. Maybe I don't deserve to find you. Maybe I don't deserve to apologize. Maybe you wouldn't even listen. All I know is that you're too important to me to let you go. I throw my doubts into the breeze because I know that this desert would feel much safer in your kiss. The wind would whistle and the spirits would be set free. So for now, I'll keep searching. Town by town, valley by valley, I swear on everything that I won't stop looking for you until the day that I die. Who are you? I'm Abigail. Who are you? Rosie. Sorry, you startled me. Um, what, how did you find this place? I'm meeting someone. They told me to come here. Why? I used to come here a lot, but I haven't been back in three years. It's a good spot. Care to wait with me? Sure. So, you say you haven't been back here in three years. How come? This was the place where my long lost love left me. I did something bad and he ran away. What'd you do? I'm gonna need a couple more of these before I talk about that. All right. Well, you're not the only one who's done anything bad. I'm not so innocent either. Oh yeah? How so? You know what they call the other woman? I fell in love with someone in a relationship. And did you know about it? I did. And you don't feel any sort of guilt? No one should feel guilty for the last time. So because of that? I made him leave her. And he did? How could you do that to her? Why? No, it's because it was a dying, toxic relationship. I mean, he needed any excuse to get rid of her, and I gave him that. 
On paper, I know I'm in the wrong and he's in the wrong, but if you had heard the way he spoke about her, you would have done the same thing. Wouldn't you do anything for your love? Yes. How did he tell her? No, he didn't. She would have never let go that easily. Instead, we came up with a way for him to escape that suspicion. What did you do? It was perfect. We essentially framed her for a crime. And he disappeared in the aftermath. Damn. All right, I showed you mine. Now what did you do? I betrayed my love. Thank you. So we, Jesse and I, used to be inseparable. We liked to explore the great unknown and roam the desert and commit little heists. It was a dangerous life to live, but I didn't need certainty with him by my side. You know, we lived like old Western movie characters and I loved every second of it. We lived like that for years until our final heist. So, you know, he had this old family heirloom, this beautiful turquoise ring. It was very expensive. And there was this one day that he asked me to hold on to it for him while we went out for a heist. I don't even remember what it was we were stealing, but somehow the heist went wrong and, and we almost got into a gunfight, so we ran out of there and came back here. That sounds exciting. <laughs> yeah, that's one word for it. When we got back that night, I couldn't find the ring anywhere, and I just had this deep feeling that I was the one who had lost it. It doesn't sound entirely like your fault, though. It, you didn't do it with purpose. Yeah, but I knew of its importance. I mean, not only was it this family heirloom, it was essentially his inheritance. Like, he lost everything. The last thing he said to me was, I never want to see you again. I'm sorry. You know, I thought that maybe if I had gone out and tried to find him, maybe we could, we could work things out. Maybe time would yield forgiveness. Just like you, I would do anything for love. Cheers to that. Listen, Rosie, I think you might be being a little hard on yourself. I can tell you have a good heart and that you don't do things with malice and... Jesse! Where did you find that? Can't find something that was never lost. I'll see you in hell. <laughs> <laughs>